We're here at Clonmel, my yeah. local track where I was born. Yeah. A place where legends are born, apparently. Well, no, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, listen, we're two winners. Good day, so happy enough. Yep. Now, now Tiger Roll, a triumph yeah. hurdle winner, a grand yeah. national winner, a legend yeah. in your yard. Is he yeah. going to Cheltenham on Friday? Yeah, he runs Friday. He's over there and all this. We're looking forward to him. Um, he's got a lot of weight, so I suppose he's ever going to get better. He could get better tomorrow. Yeah. But, um, he run off level with all them horses now in December and, and in March, so we look forward to running them. If I said to you before Tiger Roll won the Grand National, could a horse that small win it, what would you have said? Uh, listen, Red Rum was a small horse and he won it, but if you asked me after he won a triumph hurdle, I probably would have laughed at you. Yep, and obviously looking ahead to Sunday, Sam Crow's back now. Yeah. Has he been impressing since his uh, defeat at Down Royal? He's one good bit of work the other day, so he has to, has to improve. Yep. I think Fahin and Ireland are going to run, so yep. he has to improve. And I saw Malone Road has an entry. Yeah. Will he run? He'll run probably Sunday in the bumper for your bumper as well. I was over at the Cheveley Park stud this week, and yeah. uh, the owners are very enthusiastic, aren't they? Yeah, no, he's a nice horse, and we're very lucky to have a couple of nice horses for them. Give me a second, boys and girls. Just trying to... Trying to look presentable on camera for all of you lovely, lovely people. I think that will do. There we go. I even got my eyebrows done today. Look at that. Good evening, boys and girls. It's me, the racing blogger. I'm back again for a new start to this YouTube series, a.k.a. Blogsy's Road to Cheltenham. And I cannot, I cannot wait, Mr. Pumpkin. I cannot bloody wait, mate. It is exciting. The real big boys are back. Well, they've been back since Sam Crow got beat. My, oh, my, that was unbelievable, eh? All the way to Down Royal, and I've only gone and stopped Sam Crow. You couldn't make it up, could you? My first trip to Belfast. If you haven't been to Down Royal, I highly recommend that trip over there for those two days. The city is brilliant. The coffee is mwah. And the food was bloody good as well. Um, and if you go to Belfast, make sure you do a city tour bus thing around the city. Dress up warm though, it was freezing on top of that bus. My lips were so chaffed afterwards, it took me two days to recover. Um, I went to Clummel also recently for the uh, Clummel oil chase, my local track where Blogsy was born. Born in Clummel Hospital, back where it all began. So that was pretty exciting. Interviewed Gordon there, interviewed Willie, AKA Big G, Big W, the ledges. Um, and I love visiting some of these smaller tracks. Um, for me, I started racing blogger at Kempton on a Monday. So uh, for me, going to the smaller tracks on a smaller day where you've got the real hardcore racing fans, I should say, I personally really, really enjoy away from the big meetings. Anyway, let's kick on. We're going to talk about Ascot and Haydock quickly. I'm short on time because I'm flying out to Dublin tomorrow morning for a good friend's wedding, which I'll fill you all about in about tomorrow. And we're going to have a quick look at Navan for Sunday. I've spotted a few horses running there who are quite interesting. So thanks to all of you last year who interacted with these videos. Shout out to all of you who retweeted them and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You are Blogsy's family and I've got a lot of love for you. Please keep on retweeting the videos. It means a lot to me. I put a lot of time and energy into these to bring you the entertainment. And all I ask is, you bloody retweet them. Right, you maniacs. I love you. Let's get cracking with this new Road to Cheltenham. So the big Betfair chase over at Haydock, the official going on the chase course is good. We may only have five, but we've got five luscious contenders. I'm going to start with Thistlecrack, who unbelievably is the outsider of the five. And quite simply, I don't think the crack is still the true crack. And that's heartbreaking to say because as a novice, this horse won the King George in emphatic fashion. I was there on my birthday. Hashtag don't forget it's my birthday on Boxing Day, all right? I'll be, I'll be out with a spoons, giving you all the uh, table number to fill me full of booze for that day. <laughs> Love you. But Thistle Crack was super impressive that day. He went on to take on many clouds at Cheltenham over in January. And unfortunately, many clouds died that day. We lost the legend. And ever since that race, Thistlecrack's never been the same. He had a, a while off. He obviously suffered an injury. Came back at Newbury in the long walk where he was well touted to win that by the Tizards. But um, he got beat as an 11 to 10 favourite. Went on to run in the King George again. Was only beaten six lengths by Mike Bite. But he didn't seem to have the same sparkle. He's been off for another 333 days. And I think you're asking a lot for a horse who's shown so much over hurdles and potentially fences to come back from those injuries. He's 10 years old now, about to hit 11 uh, coming up this year. I don't think the crack is still the crack. If he proves me wrong, trust me, I will be one of the most pleased people. Hopefully the crack can show his old sparkle, but I think it's unlikely. What do you think? 
Moving on to Clandazobo for Paul Nichols. Paul gave this horse the big G up in his Betfair column, but I don't really buy it. He's a nine to one shot. He's a course winner here at Haydock, but let's face it, he's got 10 lengths to make up on my bite for the Betfair Bowl, for the for the Betway Bowl, I should say. The Betway Bowl, I'll be getting in trouble there. I'll oh, get a phone call from Mr. Allen. We sponsor it, Blogsy. Not Barry, not Barry from Betfair, but he was um, 10 lengths behind Mike Bite that day. Before that, he was beaten at Cheltenham by Guitar P, and I don't really think Clander Zobo has the credentials to beat either of the top two in the market, Native River or Mike Bite. Bristol Demai, Nigel Twiston Davis was reported as saying this week that he doesn't mind if his ground is faster. Well, I do mind because he's a one-trick pony. We all know it. He's an absolute superb horse from the front when he can bully horses on heavy ground. And I don't think he's anywhere near the same on good ground. He's got seven lengths to make up with Mike Bite, who was eased down to win at Aintree in the Betway Bowl. And I cannot see Bristol Demai reversing the form at all. The big question is, will he even run? I think Nigel will make a decision tomorrow. So we'll find out more about that tomorrow. Moving on to the big two. It's revenge time. Native River taking on Mike Bite. Listen, Native River is an outstanding racehorse. He's done nothing but improve. His resume is absolutely top draw. He hacked up in the Hennessy, or should I say the Labrook. It was actually still called the Hennessy there. Off a 155. Went on to win the Coral Welsh National. Off a 155. He stays all day long. He was third in the Gold Cup that year on good ground. That was a blinding run. The following year, he obviously had his um, a few small problems. Came back at Newbury the same day as Altior in the Denman chase. Hosed up and went on to beat Mike Bite. Now, if you were at Cheltenham that day or if you saw the race, the ground was absolutely ghastly. Horses were finishing well strung out. Mike Bite was cruising, jumping two out. I think he traded at about 1.34 on the machine around that marker. And quite simply, the gas run out. What you've got to remember is the Gold Cups run over three miles two and a half furlongs. Back at Haydock today, it's run over three mile one. It's a, a furlong and a half shorter, which is 300 meters on better ground. You've got to ask yourself this one question. If you drop the furlong and a half and run the race on better ground, would Mike Bite have beaten Native River? And for me, the answer is a very obvious yes. Moving on to Mike Bite, he's your even money favorite, trained by Nicky Henderson, who's in brilliant form. He's got an army of horses this year to go to war and I thought Mike Bite was brilliant last year. He won the King George, admittedly not that impressive, but the ground was pretty taxing that day. Second in the Gold Cup, as we all know. Made amends back on better ground over at Aintree, hacking up in the Betway Bowl, and then he was put away. He's been trained for this race, as most of them have, but I think Mike Bite will track the pace, probably sit in second place, and simply be too good for his rivals. Nicky Henderson's been very, very bullish. He's even been comparing him to Sprinter Sakura, which I think is a bit crazy. Nicky, are you getting carried away? But there will be no excuses for Mike Bite. For me, he's the banker. He will win tomorrow. And I'm very, very excited about seeing Nico de Bonville back in the saddle. Let me know who's going to win down below. I think it will basically be a replay of the Gold Cup 1-2. And... Um, you know, Mike Bite will be back in the winner's enclosure. I hope so. I really hope so, because I'll be watching from a wedding in Ireland, and I don't want to see him beat. Right, going back a race to 225 at Haydock, the Betfair Exchange Stayers Hurdle. This is a good pot, this 56 grand to the winner, and it's no surprise Ian Williams has got first assignment back out. He's running off a mark of 135. He's still eight pounds ahead of the handicapper because he's due to be reassessed pretty soon. I was at Cheltenham when he won seven days ago last Saturday. He hammered boyhood nine lengths. He was eased down by Tom O'Brien. I don't know how many pounds this horse has ahead of the handicapper but I'll tell you one thing I'll be very very surprised if he can't win on this ground it's going to be very similar to Cheltenham he's very well handicapped only carrying 11 stone and quite frankly I don't see any of the other horses in this race with the handicap ability of first assignment off a marker 135 I'll be gutted if he gets beat and I think it's, a, it's been a very shrewd piece of placing by Ian Williams who is one of the most talented trainers in the country under both codes, training flat horses and jumpers. He trains down in Birmingham, and when I get myself a horse, Mr. Ian Williams, I'll probably be sending one to you. I think first assignment's a banker.
Kicking over to Ascot, the 130 is a two mile five mare's handicap hurdle for horses rated zero to 130. Warren Greatrix had a double today. His horses are running really well. Obviously, star mare Le Bagoro won for Warren at Newbury a couple of weeks ago. He had a horse called Emmerton win today over at Fosslass. If you haven't seen that win, go and watch it. Warren seems quite excited. Um, this petticoat tail, she's had a wind up. She runs off 125. She's available at 9 to 2. Fourth at Carlisle in November behind Aspen, Colorado, who was with Joseph O'Brien for a long time. Switched to John Joe. Suddenly, he's won two in a row for JP. Hint, hint. They had it right off. But this petticoat tails could still be pretty well handicapped. Sent Solano's a mare that I tipped up last year for Noel Williams, who's very good at training these mares. Um, she's racing for 126. The mark might be a bit steep, but keep an eye on her. Have a look at her fitness in the uh, pre-parader on TV if you can. If she's fit, I think she could go very close indeed. Now, it's obviously a major shame that Min hasn't come over because if Min was taking Pulatug on again, it probably would have been a rematch of their entry race last year. That was one hell of a race, two of them going tongue to tongue all the way down to the final fence and barely a nostril separated them at the line. There is no Min, but we do have Pilatug, who is one of the most admirable horses in training and a real flag bearer for Paul last year. He won the Holden Gold Cup, the Tingle Creek when he beat Fox Norton, and he went on to obviously beat Min. He's got a really, really good record, a great strike rate, this flying grey, a beautiful horse to look at. And he beat Rock the Casbah, Back here in the novices chase, the T Knowles novices chase over two mile five fairly easily. He's a great jumper, whole uh, hand in hand, and um, it's hard to see Pulitzer being beat if he runs to his form. He's rated 168 by the official handicapper. He's clear of most of the other horses. Paul will have this well tuned up to win. Sam Twiston Davis, a regular pilot of the horse, doing the steering. You've got to think this course and distance winner will take some beating. He's very, very consistent. He should love the ground. And I think he really is a banker. Gold present for Nicky Henderson. I don't personally think he's good enough. Benatar, the apple of Jamie Moore's eye. I interviewed him a couple of days ago at Plumpton. He was really looking forward to riding this horse. But again, when it comes to taking on the best of the best, I'm just not quite sure if Benatar is good enough. But he does have a cracking record at Ascot. Sharabelle for Kim Bailey. Kim's horses are running really, really well. Sharabelle finally got back in the winner's enclosure, beating Baron Alco, who obviously went on to win the bet victor. He gave him £12. That form is rock solid. Sharabelle has always hinted at being potentially top draw and I think he's the main danger to Pilatug. So I think it could be a forecast between Pilatug and Sharabelle in the Christie's chase. It's a good race that at Ascot you can still get 6-5 to five Pilatug, 7-2 to Sharabelle and 4-1 to one Benatar. But I think the Flying Grey will be back in the winner's enclosure once again for Paul Nichols. Moving on to the Coral Hurdle, the 240. This is another race that's really lost the shine. There is no Lorena. Get the violin out and cry me a river. I was really looking forward to her. She looks like the next Annie Power. The way she won it. Cheltenham last year was just absolutely sensational. You don't get many horses winning by 18 lengths at the festival. That was super impressive. But we do have If the Fit Caps, We Have a Dream, and Old Guard. The truth of the matter is this. If the, fit ca if the Cap Fits, blogger, beat We Have a Dream last time out over at Wynn Canton and the Unibet Hurdle. Beat him by seven lengths, um, receives three pounds, the same as today. And I can't really see any reason why that form is going to be reversed. Harry's Fry, Harry Fry's horses are running really well. He's got, in my opinion, the best jockey in the country doing the steering in Noel Feely. And I know it's a bit boring to say it, but I do think if the cap fits, we'll take all the beating. He's got a very progressive profile, fourth to Lahore in a bumper. He had an unbeaten season over hurdles. Never got to make it to the Cheltenham Festival or Aintree because of injury. And I think he could start to make up for lost time. It's 56 grand to the winner that for a grade two. Good prize money. I think if the cap fits, we'll be in the winner's enclosure at Ascot. Right, cracking over to Navan on Sunday. It's a race course that I'm yet to visit, but I would like to try and venture over there and do more of the Irish race courses. As you all know, I've done Galway, Leopardstown, Punchestown, uh, Down Royal, Clummel, Tipperary. Um, I'm sure I've done quite a few others. I just can't think of them right now. But I am looking forward to getting to Navan one day. I might make it on Sunday. 
I don't think Vanessa will be very happy though if I leave her in Dublin and go racing, but I might do it. I might bloody do it. Um, an interesting one in the 12.30, the opening two mile mare's auction maiden hurdle. Gypsy Island, who won a bumper, uh, has been bought by JP, hacked up at Ballin Robe. JP's got the checkbook out and bought that. So it'll be interesting to see what price that is. In the 1.30, the Cheveley Park stud have got this horse called Western Honor for Gordon. Davy Russell's booked. It's a two mile handicap hurdle, Western Honor, running off a mark of 109. It was formerly trained by James Moffat, uh, last seen at Cartmel. Gordon ran it first time up at Thurler's, just got beat by Jimmy Rabbity. Um, goes in a handicap first time. A really interesting one there in the 130 at Navin. Western Honour for Gordon Elliott. Owned by the Cheveley Park Stud, who have got a very serious horse for the bumper in Malone Road. Uh, the 2 o'clock, we've got a nice novice chase there. Gordon's got a few in there. Um, it's going to be quite a decent day. Noel taking on Gordon in quite a few races. And then we've got the Monksfield. Now, this is a really good graded novice hurdle over two and a half miles sam crow won it last year and this year's renewal looks pretty hot you've got felix deji who flopped last time dinians who's been a winning machine five wins in a row for gordon elliott and you've got first approach who was so 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 impressive at down royal when i was there and that was on the friday he beat diamond turf he's down by 13 lengths noel mead's horses are absolutely flying what i saw that day was a horse who jumps well travels well um, i think potentially he could be top draw and he's getting six pounds off dinians i think first approach can go very 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 close indeed the big race of the day is the troy town handicap chase the labrooks handicap chase for horses rated 0 to 150, 60,000 euros to the winner. And I've got a little stat here that I picked up along the way. Gordon won the race last year with Marla Beach and he's won it four times in recent years. He's got a whole host of entries. Uh, let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine. Jesus Christ almighty. 10, 11. Christ, Gordon. 12. Gordon has 12 entries out of the 25. He's got about 47% of the field. Absolutely incredible. Davey's gone for out Sam, and I think he could be the one to beat. He beat Rogue Angel last time, also trained by Gordon. Um, and it's uh, it's going to be an interesting handicap. I don't have much more to say about it than that. It's an absolute bloody nightmare. But it's a good card at Navin, and I might end up sneaking off over there. Mm. Over at Exeter on Sunday, Lil Rockefeller is running again in a three-mile novices chase. He's going to be the star performer on show there. I've looked at the opposition and I think he'll probably be a five-to-one on favourite. He's racing against absolute dogs. Hopefully I don't offend anyone's horses with that comment, but I've done it already. But uh, yeah, he's not. it's not a very competitive race. It's 12 grand first prize, but no one's really there to take him on. On Monday at Kempton, there's a really good card over there. And looking ahead briefly to next week, we've got the big Labrooks trophy. Elegant escape for Colin Tizard, your 6-1 to one favourite. Ken Boy, who won at Clummel, second fav there. Over at Newcastle, potentially... Boobadere versus Sam Crow versus Somerville Boy. And we shall be seeing Apple's Jade in the Hatton's Grace for Gordon Elliott. And she was really impressive last time out. The following week, the champ's back. Hashtag 80, aka blogger, out of your, I'm ready for bed. But it's a big few weeks of racing. The big races are going to come at us really fast now. Boobadere, Sam Crow next week, out of your the following week. And then we'll hopefully be seeing Mike Bite back in the King George. As for this week, I'm banking on Mike Bite winning. I think first assignment will take some beating for Ian Williams. Sent Solano in the mares could be worth a shout each way if she looks fit. Check her out in the paddock or on TV if you can. And pull a tug, the flying grey, to jump them silly for Paul Nichols. I'm off to the airport bright and early. I'll be seeing some of you over in Dublin getting married tomorrow. Good luck, good luck with all your bets. Let me know your bankers down below. And as always, retweets. Retweets are very much appreciated, boys and girls. Lots of love, Blogsy. Yeah. Is there anything we should be looking out for in the future, a Jamie special yeah. for all the lads at home? No, look, I, I, I do really like Benatar, you know, he's, yeah. he's a very nice horse. Um, and he just weren't quite right the other day, but he, I think he's going to be running at Ascot Saturday maybe, so um, 
hopefully he, he's definitely one of our good horses, yeah. Awesome, good to see you. And keep Something on banging in those winners. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Made a few euros. Uh, how, how are you doing, all right? Did you have a winning day? Yes. Uh, what did you back today? I back Roaring Bull. Hey, hey, the bull. Have you, got, have you got a tip for the weekend? Um, am I on page three now? I? No, I'm not page three, no. We're, we're not good looking enough to be on page three. <laughs> a tip for the weekend. Uh, I run against the, I run against the All Blacks. What price are they? Five to two. Five to two, there you go. Five to two, Ireland be the All Blacks. And Sam Crow to win. Sam Crow, Gordon Elliott, good luck. And look at, look at these two men here. Bringing all the live action in Cromwell. This is a legend right here. We love it.